In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to take an existing project and use it as a template for a brand new project. You'll often find a situation where you've already created a project that you can use as the core of a new project. You don't have to start the new project from scratch. Or you may have a situation where you have a client and the client has a project you've already done for them that they really like, and they just want to change certain components of it for an additional project. And all you have to do is load a copy of that and tweak it to develop a new project with much less effort. We're going to be using a technique that involves using what is called nested projects. And so to make sure that we have our settings correct, we're going to check our settings, which is the gear at the very top. I'll click on that. And then from the drop-down, I'm going to choose the second option in the upper left panel called Editing. And then we want to make sure that in the middle of that screen, when it says Set Default Insert Project Behavior, I want it to say As Nested Project. The other option is As Expanded Project. We're not going to use that option in this case. So I can either click on OK or Cancel since I have the settings the way I want them to be. Now I need to find a project that I can modify. I'm going to assume that I'm working with a vacation agency and they're looking at vacation destinations. And all I want to do is change the videos we use of potential places that you can go through the agency. I have three new video clips I've already put in the media room. One is of a clip of a metro area with a bridge, then we have one of a seacoast, and then we have one of a canyon. Let's assume that we want to use two or more of these in a brand new clip that's built on an older project. So I need to find that older project and nest it. The way I do that is I'm in my media room and I click on the down arrow at the very top and I choose My Projects. That will give me a list of projects that I have worked on most recently. Now if the project you want is something you've done but is not in this display on the left panel, what you need to do is load that project and then you can close it out it will automatically add it to the list you find here. I'm going to assume for this tutorial's sake that we have a project called Travel One. Now you can actually preview it in the preview window by double clicking on it. And when you do, you'll get to see the project. Here we have a title with a background and then we transition into a desert scene and that will eventually morph into a water scene which then shifts to yet a third scene. So we're going to take this established project and use it as a template for a brand new project. So I'm going to take and drag it and drop it down into my timeline, just like I would any other media. But when I do that, you notice something happens that normally does not happen. It adds the letters PDS to the left of this track, and it adds a second tab. Now what's new untitled project? Well that's the modification I'm working on right now. I'm going to save it. I'll click File, Save Project As. I'm going to call this Travel 2. So this is my Travel 2 project. Now you notice the tab changed. We're going to build it off of Travel 1, which is our nested project. You notice all I have are two basic lines that define the, the length of the project. But even though I can't see any of the details, if I play it, it will play the project as created with audio, video, effects, and everything. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to click on the other tab, which is my nested project. What I do, it takes me back to a copy of the original project that I've nested. Now that's important to realize because I can edit this all I want and I will not alter anything in the original project because it's a pure copy. In fact, if I go into the media content, I will see that it's already pulled in 
all the elements I had in my nested project. They're there for me to use now in my modified project, my Travel 2. There are a couple things to note. If I click back on the Travel 2, my newer project, and I look at the shape of the old one without getting into it, I want to go to the end of this and by pressing the end key and then look at the time indicator. I'm at 59 seconds and 29 frames, essentially one minute. So if my project is a minute long, this will make it very easy for me to develop another project that is also a minute. This is really important when it comes to advertising. So let's click on travel number one, which is my nested project, and we can go back and edit it. Let me show you some important things to remember when you're editing a nested project. I want to replace the old videos with new ones. So let's take a couple of the new ones we have here. Let's take our ocean scene. I'll drag and drop it over the first video. If I click replace, watch what happens. It simply replaces it and it keeps it the very same length as the original video. So it will crop the video to fit the space. But in doing so, I preserve both my transition that begins and ends that particular video. If I take the second one and drag and drop it down over the middle one, I will hit replace. Now something different happened because in this case, my uh, video that I used was shorter. If you use a shorter video and use replace, you're going to have to find a way to lengthen it uh, if you want to keep it to the same time frame or you're going to have to change the length of the video. So a shorter replacement is going to change the timing of your new project as opposed to the old one. It also caused the transition to disappear since it was shorter. I'll do a control Z to get out of that. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing that I want to do is let's take this one here and drag and drop this down in the third area. Again, we're longer. And since we're longer, when I click on replace, it simply uh, crops it to fit the size. I also may want to change the transitions on some of these. I can easily do that by going to the transition room and I can just drag and drop on top and it will automatically replace one transition with another. And so we had the transition coming out of the waves. And it's now a slide transition. So when I go back to my new project called Travel 2 and click here, it looks like nothing's changed. But when I play this from any moment to any other time, I'll find that all the new videos, there's a transition right here, all the new videos any changes I've made will be reflected here. And this is the one that controls the rendering time. You notice we're still at, if I click on the end, we're still at 59 seconds and 29 frames. But here's something you have to be aware of. I'll go back to my nested project that I've edited. Let's take that project, go back into uh, my options, and I'm going to take a longer video here. This is longer, I think it is, yes. And instead of replace, I'll, I'll click on replace. But then what I want to do is I want to lengthen it to the length of the video itself. Now I've maintained the video. I'm going to have to edit the music if I do this. But now my, my edited nested project is longer. If I click here and, and hover over the timeline, I'm now at 1 minute 9 seconds. Now when I go to render this, if I go back to my new project, you notice the time hasn't changed. Now that has big implications. If my revised project built on the nested video is longer, I will not see it because it will only render up to this moment. Likewise, if my revised project is shorter, it will render for the entire 59 seconds and 29 frames. But let's assume it stops about here. 
I'm going to have all this area where it will be black. It will render it black, but it will render to the full length of this particular panel, this tab. So this controls the rendering time. The best thing to do is make sure that whatever you've done to your nested project in terms of length, you match on the tab at the left. So right now, if I were to render this, if I were satisfied with it, I've got one minute, eight seconds, 27 frames. I would simply go back and I would lengthen this one to one minute, eight seconds, and 27 frames. And I haven't done that precisely here. That's just to illustrate what you need to do to make sure. Otherwise, you're going to have some rendering issues. I hope this has been helpful, but it's a very easy way to take an existing project and make it a template on which you can build another project, saving time, effort, and creative talent.